description of this. And I would like us to look at these graphs. So with a sample of 300 sample proportions with a size of 10 of the sample size, yeah, it's not really normal. But look what happens with when I increase the sample size to 50. Uh, and let's see what happens when I increase the sample size with 100. So it is safe. I'm going to stop sharing. It is safe to say that after we look at these graphs, that's why I wrote myself a note here, present the graphs, see graphs. Here are our conclusions about the sampling distribution. See if this was very clear. If X is normally distributed, and even if it isn't, as we increase the sample size, this will also be normal. But we want to be able to write for P hat. What is P hat? Is it normal? Yes, no, etc. So we observed about the shape. As n increases, the shape of the sampling distribution of the sample proportion becomes approximately normal. So I'm ready to say this. OK. The center. Yes, the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample proportion, it was p. So I'm going to put p according to our observations. The spread. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample proportion decreases as n increases. and it was calculated a long time ago to be this, the square root of p, 1 minus p, divided by n. So as we said in the past, last time, with x bar, and we were able to say it's the same mean, but the standard deviation much smaller, much smaller, by the, divided by the square root of n. Now we can say that the sampling distribution of p hat is normally, so it's normal, with p, the mean is the population proportion, and uh, the standard deviation is this. Now, there are several conditions here, conditions, that we will always test from the beginning. Here are the two conditions. One, the condition for normality, and the other for independence. These are a must. We will have to check these before we start. The sample size has to be less than or equal to 5% of the population size. And I have it written down. You don't have to copy it again. So this is the independence condition. The sample size has to be less than or equal to 5% of the population size. Otherwise, we cannot assume independence. And the normality condition is the product n, p, 1 minus p, has to be greater than or equal to 10. So otherwise, we cannot assume normality. And this is the condition for independence. So independence requires that the sample size is less than or equal to, otherwise we will uh, assume that they are dependent. So less than or equal to the population size, less than or equal to 5% of the population size. And in order to make sure that we the assumption is correct here, that p hat, the, the sample proportion is normally distributed with mean p and the standard deviation this, um, we have to make sure that NP1 minus P is greater than or equal to 10. Okay. So knowing all this, let's look at the next example at the top of page 2. Based on a study conducted by Gallup organization, 76% of Americans believe that the state of moral values in the United States is getting worse. In this example, we are told that P equals 0.76, given. This is given to us in the problem. Then, suppose we obtain a simple random sample of N equals 60. 
Americans and determine which of them believe that the state of moral values in the United States is getting worse. Describe the sampling distribution of the sample proportion for Americans with this belief. I cannot do that before I check two things. I have to check normality and I have to check independence before I do anything. So in order to check normality, I have n times p, 1 minus p, n, sample size, 60, p, 0.76, 1 minus p, 1 minus 0.76. Calculator, if this is not a number greater than 10, I'll say sorry, I don't have an answer for you. 60 multiplied by 0.76, parentheses, 1 minus 0.76, close the parentheses, 10.944. It is greater than 10 or equal to 10. So the normality condition is fulfilled. Now I have to check the independence. So we are about 306. Uh, we are about 360 million US citizens, residents. I don't know, citizens, I'm not sure. So that's why I had hesitated to write citizens. So we're only talking about 60 out of 360 million. Of course, the, con the condition of independence, because 0 0.05 times this number is way bigger, bigger than 60. So both conditions are fulfilled. So I will say yes to both, yes and yes. Therefore, the sampling distribution of p hat is normal with 0.76 as being the mean and the standard deviation also called standard error of p uh, is the square root of 1 uh, of 0.76 first of all 1 minus 0.76 divided by uh, 60. So we want to determine this. We normally won't um, need it depending on the calculation, but now we want to determine it. So careful how you put it in, the square root. Please put parentheses. They will, they, normally they will pop up with parentheses. These new calculators omit certain things and I don't trust them. 0.76, another parenthesis, 1 minus 0.76. Close the first parenthesis, divide by 60, and don't forget to close the second parenthesis, which is what you have under the square root. Be careful. And press enter. And I got 0 0.0. So uh, sigma p hat, 0 0.0551. Uh, mu p hat, 0.76. So when I, we're asked to determine, describe the sampling distribution of the sample proportion for this, that's the description. Normal with mean 0.76 and standard deviation uh, with mean 0.76 and standard deviation 0 0.0551. Any questions so far? And we will finish this section unless you have questions, and then we can go to uh, my labs plus. What what does it say for the equation in the square root after 0.76? Uh, so it's the square root of 0.76 1 minus 0.76 over n, because it's the square root of p 1 minus p over n. Okay, thank you. Sorry I was about just having trouble yes, reading it. of course. Sorry about that. Why do we need the sampling distribution? Because we want to look at proportions. And here's an example. Let me know when you're ready for the example. Okay. According to the National Center for Health Statistics, 15% of all Americans have hearing trouble. Okay. 
That is P hat or P. Can anyone identify it? Anyone? Anyone, please? I'm sorry. Is anyone listening? I was still trying to copy the notes. What was the question? Oh, you have the notes. The notes are posted. I know. I just want it in my notebook as well. Oh, sure, sure. So according to the National Center for Health S Statistics, 15% of all Americans have hearing trouble. Is this P or P hat? Uh, P hat? We haven't talked about sample yet. Oh, true. It says all Americans. P. Good. In a random sample of 120 Americans, N equals 120. What is the probability that at most 12% have hearing trouble? We want to find that P, what is the probability that at most? So P hat less than 0.12. This is our question. In a random sample of 120, what is the probability that at most, at most, Remember, it's a continuous distribution. If you put this or this, it doesn't matter. I have hearing trouble. Okay. Number one and number two. I don't care. This means nothing. I need to test. I have two conditions to test, without which I can't state any conclusion. The first conclusion, the first uh, um, test is that um, the sample size must be less than or equal to 0 0.05 of the population size. Yes, it is. For the same argument from five minutes ago, uh, the, um, we are about 360 million and this is 120 people. So absolutely, yes, the independence uh, condition is fulfilled. Now, NP1 minus P has to be at least 10. If it isn't, then I'll say, sorry, I don't know how to give you the proportion, the percentage. Sorry, I can't have it. So N, 120, P, 0.15 times 1 minus 0.15. So if this is not at least 10, then I'll say, sorry, the conclusion, the um, assumption for no normality is not fulfilled. So 120 times 0.15 times 0.85. And I got 15.3. Good enough. The normality is OK. So yes, both conditions are fulfilled. Only then I will say that p hat is normally distributed or approximately normally distributed with mean, the population mean, standard deviation, I don't know, uh, 0.15 times 0.85, I already subtracted 1 minus 0.15 divided by 120. So let's, so this is the sampling distribution for p hat. I'm going to determine it. I don't need it. You'll see how we put it in the calculator. We don't need it because I prefer entering it like this. But let's approximate it. Again, the square root of 0.15 times 0.85 divided by 120 and close the parentheses. I got 0 0.0326. So for this, for mu, uh, sigma p hat. 0 0.0326. Now I can answer the question. So the probability that p hat is less than 0.12. So if I select a sample, what is the probability that less than 12% of the sample will say whatever? So let's check. 
I go to the calculator with normal CDF from negative infinity to 0.12. So normal CDF from negative infinity, negative second EE, which is the comma, 99. I have to have that from negative infinity. The upper is 0.12. Mu is 0.15. And you can enter this or you can enter that. It's not going to be a big deal, so 0 0.0326. Although, if I enter it uh, like this, it will be exact. But if I um, approximate it, I may have an approximation, not, not the best result. So I got 0 0.1787. 0 0.1787. Okay, I would like to go to StatCrunch for a second. I'm going to share. Okay, I have to get out of there with this cape. Does it allow me to? Come on. Okay, it does. Okay, and I want to go here. Do I have StatCrunch? No, I don't have StatCrunch on this one yet. Brought up. Okay, I'm moving you to the side, sorry. Stat crunch. Wake up, wake up. Okay, so we go to stat calculators. We go to normal. I'm moving you again. Sorry, guys. Okay, and we want uh, less than uh, less than 0 0.012. Nope. 0 0.012, and we have the mean, which is 0 0.15, and we have the standard deviation, which we calculated as 0 0.0326 and I want to compute and the answer should be 0 0.1787 and it is that was a refresher from last time I'm gonna stop sharing okay part B suppose that a random sample of 120 Americans who regularly listen to music using headphones results in 26 having hearing trouble. Aha, so this is part B. So this was part A, and this is part B. In part B, they say that um, we determine a P hat to be X, which is 26, divided by 120. Suppose that a random, random sample of 120 Americans, sample size, who regularly listen to music using headphones, result in 26 having hearing trouble. What might you conclude? Okay. So let's determine this. Uh, 26 divided by 120, I got 0 0.2167. Notice that the mean of this population was given to us as 0.15. We will determine the probability since this is bigger than this. I need to find the probability of p hat this, p hat being greater than this, 0.2167. And then we'll conclude depending on what we get. So let's do it with stat crunch because I have it up. I'm sharing again, stat crunch. So I have uh, the mean is this and the standard deviation is that. And uh, we want to change the symbol to greater than. And we want to put in here point, point 0.2167. And let's see the probability and compute. So 0 0.02. So what we conclude is that this is kind of unusual because it's 2%. 0 0.02. Four, if you want. So this is 2.04%. Um, so this situation is 
kind of unusual, right? It's unusual to get um, such a result that 26, um, that more than uh, 26 out of 120 uh, will result in hearing loss. or anywhere above 20, 21.67%. Any questions?